the great thing about Riot um, is that we're kind of at this intersection of um, publishing uh, tech and um, uh, creative content, cre creating original content. Um, so about five, six years ago, uh, Riot was started by humanitarians, journalists, um, who had an interest in creating content that actually changed the world. But many of you are journalists and who doesn't want to change the world with the content that you're creating, right? Um, but uh, Riot is great because um, we're pretty legit in the space of 360. Um, we have created over 200 films in 50 countries. And again, with now the backing of Verizon and AOL, we have a reach on Facebook of um, up to 1 billion. And, um, and so this uh, acquisition has been really great um, for everyone, I think. A lot of changes to come, too. Um, so, yes, uh, everybody said that 2016 was the year of AR, VR. Uh, I think that was pr proven wrong in a, yeah, right? And some people are now saying 2017 is the year, right? Um, but we were introduced to some great things, of course. Uh, we were acquired by AOL Huffington Post. Um, New York Times had Daily 360. Their series is wonderful. Um, even the UN launched the UN VR app, which who thought? Yeah, the UN would be on top of this, which is fantastic. Um, Facebook, of course, we had Pokemon Go and um, Snapchat. Um, yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about the immersive experiences. And, uh, you know, we they say that it's, it's the empath empathy machine. I tend not to say that VR and 360 um, really uh, promote empathy, uh, but um, it does allow people to get first person experiences um, to places and, and to things that you know, maybe they didn't have access to before, which is amazing. Uh, one thing that I do like to say about immersive uh, storytelling, um, in particular 360, is that we kind of have to forget everything that we have been taught about filmmaking. And as journalists and filmmakers, we like to have control, right? Um, we're cutting together, and, and in 360, of course, we, we do edit um, our pieces, but there's not a lot of hiding. And it's really important to remember that we're creating experiences, um, and, and also that we need to kind of let go of control, which can be very difficult too, right? Um, as a filmmaker and, a, and, a, and someone who's creating content, we just kind of want to make sure that it's exactly what we would want, but really we have to think about the user first. Um, so that's very, very important, especially since we're now allowing the user to kind of be the one that's really driving the experience. Uh, so another thing that we do, and I don't know if I mentioned this, so, so uh, Riot, we do premium video, uh, we do um, AR, VR, and 360. And so I explained a little bit about the immersive, which would be more so the 360 video. And um, with AR, um, AR is a little different, and I think we, we got some information about that. Um, there's nothing that changes really within our environment. There are things that are added within our existing environment. So it's essentially just a layer of uh, digital information that alters and enhances um, our current state or experience environment. Again, here we go with 2016, the year of AR. But again, we had Pokemon Go, we had Snapchat, um, the HoloLens, which is awesome. Um, there was a really, really cool thing that Nike did with um, AR sneakers. I wish I had an example. You can look it up, though. You can Google it, um, which was fantastic. And of course, we've been using AR for healthcare um, and for e-commerce as well. And I don't know why I didn't think about bringing um, some demos, because the demos are like the coolest part. But um, next time. Uh, this was something that a tech reporter said, that augmented reality is going to fundamentally change our expectations of what information is available and where. And, and I truly believe this, but in addition to this, I think that, you know, 
the great thing about AR is that instead of being um, kind of an isolating um, medium, you know, VR with headsets and whatever else, you know, it's kind of an experience that you, you tackle on your own. Um, but with AR, it's really fantastic be because you can actually come together and experience it together and share it together. And so, um, yeah. Um, and ease, yeah, the ease of you. It's just it's an easy to use platform. It's something that you can just have on, through a mobile app, um, through an SDK, and um, it's just really, really easy to understand. I mean, when we're explaining 360 and VR to clients, it's kind of hard, you know, for them to kind of get it. But with AR, it's right there in front of you. It's super simple. You get it right away, and you also understand exactly how you could use it, maybe for your business or for for content, whatever it may be. Um, so this is uh, this is true. And again, uh, AR use for e-commerce. Um, you know, right here it says 40% uh, would be willing to pay more for a product if they could experience it through AR. I believe this to be true. Sephora did a really cool interactive um, AR experience where, could, where you could actually try on the makeup and, um, and you know, it really worked for them. Uh, one demo that I could actually show you, um, I have a video of it, was something that we did for Hidden Valley Ranch. Um, super simple. AR demo that we did, and let me see if I can play it in here, or maybe, hold on. Oh, sorry, where are you? Am I messing your stuff up, Tricia? Where do I go? Oh, here we go. So this was something that our, with the volume. Oh. Our lead engineer, our pay, needs this AR experience in reality. And again, it's just like a way to take additional information that you have for a product or whatever you're interested in. Um, and it's cool. You know, it looks, it's, it's magic, um, if you will. So um, that was something that. Um, that Hervé created. And there are a lot of different things that we're actually doing with AR. Um, and, and again, it's something that has been pretty, pretty easy to convey to or to relay to clients because they automatically get it and, and they know exactly how they can utilize it. Um, how do I get back to my, where are we? Or do you do it from there? Oh. Oh, wait, what? What am I doing? What am I doing? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> he says. Don't reopen. Oh, thank you. You know I have another video, so. <laughs> this is gonna happen. We're gonna have to do this over again, yeah. There you go. Okay. Sweet. Sorry. I want a full view. Yeah, let's keep it like this, whatever, it's fine, right? Are you okay with this? Okay, um, so distribution. So I'm a creative development producer and what I mainly focus on is content, but distribution is very important. Um, and the ways that we distribute uh, 360 video, AR, and VR is, like everyone else, through social media, native campaigns, um, we do live activations, and of course, ad units. So uh, Riot, um, we have a partnership with Facebook where we put out weekly videos. Um, we did a Facebook Live um, thing for the Women's March in uh, Washington where we went out and um, we shot 360 video for Facebook. Um, we have, you know, Again, weekly um, content that we put out in news. Um, we have HuffPost Riot, The Vote 360, which uh, Zara worked on. Um, so with this weekly 360 content, we're able to really reach um, a lot of people with our content. I know we were starting out with like a couple thousand views and now we have upwards to, you know, a couple million. So um, it's been really great again with the partnership that we've had with HuffPost to really get that scale um, 
Another thing that we've done, um, so we partnered with Samsung and we actually covered the Olympic Games in Rio and we gave uh, 12 uh, filmmakers their own Samsung um, 360 cameras and they were able to film other parts of the um, of the games that maybe other people wouldn't. Um, so this was a great opportunity for us to work with Samsung. And um, and again, you know, we had a ton of uh, video posts and uh, social media posts, 1.5 million press impressions. So um, this was a really, really successful project um, that we did. Um, another thing uh, that we did was, so we have a partnership with Google where we do um, breaking news. So we will come out with video uh, 48 hours um, we have 48 hours to basically turn around um, news content, and this is our editorial team. So this was an example of something that we did um, in Haiti. Um, and then we also, uh, with Huffington Post, had The Crossing, where um, we worked with Susan Sarandon, and she um, she covered the refugee crisis that, as it was unfolding in, um, in Greece. So uh, other partnerships that we've had that uh, include native um, campaigns, uh, this one was something that we did with AFI, American Family Insurance, um, called Fearless Dreamers, and we created uh, three 360 videos. It was a series where we um, showed how people were living out their dreams despite all odds. Um, so this was another, this was a partnership, a native partnership that we actually did with um, an insurance company. And this one, Purely Peru, we did with Clorox. And um, this one was through the uh, Clorox Clean Water Initiative. So we were able to um, follow a family that actually used tiny bits of Clorox to clean their water. And um, the cool thing about this one was that we actually had a donate button within the experience itself, so you didn't have to leave um, you know, through the, the headset. You could actually go and donate to this particular cause. And then we have uh, live activations, which is, is something that um, is really great, again, going back to the fact that uh, AR can really bring people together. And um, in this case, we brought kids in LA to the Louvre. Um, and I have an example of that. Oh. Where was it again? There we go. All right, we're going on a field trip to a museum, and not just any museum, it's actually the most famous museum in the entire world. So has anyone been to a museum in another country before ever? No. Not even another state? Wow, well this is a treat. Uh, uh, just a tiny bit, yeah. Yeah? Are you ready to go to the museum? We told you guys there was there was artwork just sitting here hidden right before your eyes. Oh. You hold it? That's the magic. That's how you work. Pull up this picture. So, here we go. Um, yeah, so that was another example of how 
Um, we use the AR to, you know, obviously bring a new experience to people um, experiencing that, bring them together, um, and then also something that you can film and add to your social channels to promote. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And then, and then there are ad units. Um, so I, I put these slides in. Um, yeah, you know, we have the, the obviously the pre-roll offerings, and you can put it through ads and ad units. I would be lying if I said that this was like my expertise, um, but um, this is another way of um, of distributing the content um, through ad units on um, on our websites. So challenges because we are at you know very early stages of this new format, um, and because no one really knows where it's going. You know, it does uh, allow us to be creative in the space, but it also kind of brings about some challenges in terms of, you know, using it for mobile online distribution. And, um, if, you know, if you think about it, even for 360, so, you know, YouTube and Facebook and now recently Vimeo, it took those platforms a long time to adopt the 360. And so, it, even though you know it's growing and people are utilizing 360, if you don't have the headset, it still limits the experience. And you know, the, with headsets, we have the Google Daydream, of course, Milk Samsung VR. But even with the affordable, like the cardboard, or even when you buy the Samsung phone, you can they like throw in um, Samsung headsets. It's still. It, it, it's still very limited. Um, people are not really um, using the headsets. Um, they're not taking the headsets with them. These are things we all know. Um, so, yeah, I know that there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk of you know that changing, and there are people who are saying that you know I think the International Data uh, Corporation predicted that there are going to be headset shipments that will reach 99.4 million in 2021. So. You know, people are anticipating that this will change, but as of now, it's still very limiting. Um, again, because not everybody is going to have the headset. So this isn't really a democratic medium, unfortunately, um, to consume and participate, but at least not yet, right? But that could change. And yeah, like I said, um, you know, you still need the headset to have that full experience, and um, the but the scale is still limited. So, um, in terms of what is next, um, people are saying that mobile AR is expected to dominate VR and AR, the, this market, um, with 108 billion by 2021. Uh, I guess that's something to look forward to. Um, but again, uh, mobile VR is still, uh, it's, it is going to be big, but it's going to take some time. Um, another thing, and I think somebody else mentioned, um, Magic Leap, um, but interactivity and mixed reality, I think, is um, the next wave, and uh, especially with immersive storytelling. And um, you know, we think that there are huge opportunities um, for education and for business in this space. Thank you. Questions for Sarah? Oh gosh, I got a couple. Hang on. Better get moving here. Start here. So great presentation, thank you. You were you referenced uh, uh, pre rolls and mid rolls, and I assume that's yeah. part of the business model to pay for this, right? Advertising. Do you know if that portion of revenue is bigger than, for example, you're producing things for for profit companies, or what's what's the relationship and business model between those two elements? Yes, um, as of now, it is a bit bigger. In term, you know, we're still very new in this space, right? As Riot just being acquired less than a year ago. Um, but from what I've seen, um, those are the offerings that a lot more people are interested in as opposed to the content. But, but again, I, I can't emphasize enough. I know we've talked about quality of content. For me, as a content creator, it's just so important that we don't lose that and we just use the technology, technology excuse me, to enhance it. Because if we're going for, you know, the VR first or the 360 first, whether it's an ad unit or whatever, um, we're, we are going to lose that experience altogether. We're going to lose consumers altogether. Um, so, yeah, yeah, to answer your question. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I'm sorry if I missed it, but just about how long did it take to do like the Louvre piece, for example, from start to finish? How many guys worked on it and how much manpower and hours did it take? Yikes. What's your email address? I will let you know. That was before my time. Um, I don't know. Were you there at that time? Okay, maybe, maybe Zara can answer that. Shooting it. Okay. Was it the environment app? Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't take very, very long. But in terms of like the kids and all of that kind of stuff, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, normally when we say, when somebody's interested in having AR and if they want it on the environment player, um, we tell them we need at least two weeks um, to, to be able to execute that. Sarah Springer. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah.